Hi, good morning. I'd like to reflect with you today on the Gospel for Friday of the second week in Ordinary Time. It's taken from Mark chapter 3, verses 13 through 19. Jesus went up the mountain and summoned those whom he wanted as they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him, and he might send them forth to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, whom he named Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, whom he named Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the uh, a day of prayer and penance in the United States, a day of prayer for the legal protection of the unborn. It denotes the uh, anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision which legalized abortion in the United States. As we hear this Gospel, we should remember that Jesus began preaching uh, when John the Baptist had been arrested, handed over. And he began with, this is the time of fulfillment. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Certainly it's a day of repentance, of doing penance uh, and reparation for the sin of abortion, the taking of an innocent human life, of praying for conversion of heart, that people's hearts would be open to the gift of life and uh, conversion of those structures which uh, guarantee an injustice uh, against uh, unborn children and which do not support even mothers carrying their children to turn. Uh, it's a day of prayer that we might acknowledge and turn to God, who is the God of life, who is the author of life, who has made man and woman in his own image and likeness, and who proposes to us the path of life who sets before us the choice between death and life and exhorts us to uh, choose wisely that we might have life and to choose life. The God who gave us his only begotten son, who became a child in the womb of his mother and who gave his life up for us to save us from our sins, who poured out the Holy Spirit, who hovered over the waters at the dawn of creation, who was breathed into Adam at the, as man became a living being, who was breathed onto the apostles by the Lord himself on the evening of the resurrection. Yes, the Spirit is the Spirit of life. And the Spirit moves in the church, and the church, as a church, we are the people of life. Jesus came proclaiming the kingdom of God, but he did not refuse the help of others. He called others to be his disciples. Last Friday, we heard the gospel of how four men brought the paralytic to Jesus for healing. Jesus forgave his sins and then healed him physically so that he picked up his mat and walked home. Well, we, the church, must bring our country, so to speak, to Jesus for a deep healing of our way of thinking and deep healing from the wounds that abortion has inflicted. So often, I was born in, in September of 1972. The Roe versus Wade decision was in January of 1973. So often, I have thought about empty seats in the classroom, empty pews in church. Who should be there? Who is not? How many have perished? Indeed, we must learn to build, little by little, a civilization of love and a culture of life. But that requires the work of a whole church, a people dedicated and committed to life. In the gospel, we heard how Jesus was somewhat worn out from his labors. He had been healing the sick. He had been exercising people of their demons, and he was being crushed by the sheer weight of the crowds. So he went up a mountain to pray. And after praying, he summoned those whom he wanted, and they came to him. And he appointed 12 of them named apostles. Apostles means those who are sent. But first and foremost, that they might be with him. And that means coming to know the Lord deeply in prayer, cultivating a friendship with him. When we come to know Jesus, we come to know God as a God of love and a God of life. And in spending this time with Jesus then, the apostles were sent forth with a real authority, with Jesus' authority, to preach and to drive out demons. We too must go forth each one of us with a certain degree of authority given to us by Jesus. We are anointed priest, prophet, and king in our baptism and sent forth on mission. Some of us are called to the ordained ministry 
and are given a different type of authority. Parents have authority over their children. Teachers, too, have authority. We must use our authority as Jesus did, always for service. Not to control others or to tell them what to do, but to serve the gift of human life, the dignity of the human person. Each one of us, like the apostles, is called by name to do our part in proclaiming the gospel of life. In the responsorial psalm for today at Mass, it was taken from Psalm 85, and it began with, Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Today is a day of prayer. We ask the Lord to pour out mercy upon our country and to grant us salvation and life. It also says, Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. There is a truth. Human life begins at conception. The human person is made in the image and likeness of God, and God is the author of life. And some people will call abortion interruption of pregnancy. Some people will try to say it's women's health. But let us be very clear about what the reality is of what is happening. St. John Paul II in his encyclical letter, The Gospel of Life, says, No word has the power to change the reality of things. Procured abortion is the deliberate and direct killing by whatever means it is carried out of a human being in the initial phase of his or her existence, extending from conception to birth. This is the truth and reality of what is happening. Kindness and truth shall meet. If this is a human person, and it is, then kindness must also meet this person. Children who are in the mother's womb must be treated with kindness and care and respect, not only by their mothers, but we must create the conditions for that child to grow and thrive and be nurtured once born. I think of the countless number of people who work at crisis pregnancy centers and their kindness and their face of charity, sometimes the only hope that a, a, a young woman carrying a child has. Can we be kind? not only to the unborn child, but to the mother, to the father, and to all those around us as witnesses to the gospel of life. Justice and peace shall kiss. A great injustice is done to the unborn child by depriving him or her of his or her right to life. And if that right to life is denied, then all other rights are also denied. We cannot be silent. People say, if you want peace, work for justice. But what about justice for the unborn child? What about this? Indeed, St. John Paul II said, the moral gravity of procured abortion is apparent in all its truth if we recognize that we are dealing with murder, and in particular when we consider the specific elements involved. The one eliminated is a human being at the very beginning of life. No one more absolutely innocent could be imagined. In no way could this human being ever be considered an aggressor, much less an unjust aggressor. He or she is weak, defenseless, even to the point of lacking the minimal form of defense consisting in the poignant power of a newborn baby's cries and tears. The unborn child is totally entrusted to the protection and care of the woman carrying him or her in the womb. Indeed, if the unborn child is vulnerable, we are all vulnerable. People will put their trust in politicians, yet it says in the scriptures, put no trust in princes. Politicians come and go. But we must fight for the right to life of these innocent and weak. We must be the voice of the voiceless. Because if someone is not willing to defend an unborn child, they probably aren't going to be willing to defend a disabled child or adult or a vulnerable adult, someone who is sick and suffering or someone who is elderly. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Abortion is a great violence in our country, and we see the violence spreading everywhere. But if we are willing to wage war against the weakest and most defensive members of society, again, no one is safe. But we as Catholics must ask, what is our duty? What is our responsibility? It says in the scriptures and in that Psalm, truth shall spring out of the earth and justice shall look down from heaven. In the book of Genesis, Cain has killed his brother Abel, and God says the blood of Abel cries out to God for justice. God cannot leave Cain's sin unpunished, and he gives Cain a protective mark over him so no one destroys Cain because he too has value. But the truth of what has been done 
does cry out for justice. But there is a greater truth that God's love is stronger than our sins, is greater than our sins. And Jesus poured out his precious blood upon the cross to redeem and save us, to give us life, to give us life in abundance and to open the way to eternal life for all of us. On this day of prayer and penance, let us pray that we might be a people of life. Let us pray for our country that the violence might stop. Let us pray for expectant mothers and their unborn children. What a joy it is to receive a newborn child into one's arms. Let us ask the Lord to help us to be the people he has called us to be, a people of life.